Mabe coming in, a few things here. I think this might be a mistake. This one here. We'll find out. And as always, there'll be links down below for things if I can give you a link for it. Right. You may think this is crazy, but I purchased one of these. It's one of these little adapters to go from like American or European type pins to well, kind of New Zealand, Australian pins. They're not actually quite because they're they've got holes in for a start and they're not insulated. But this is just an adapter. So you go from a awkward connector to a less awkward connector. For example, I've got one here already. This kind of thing can go in there like that. So then I can actually use this. Alright, so one of those sorts of connectors. I could use it for that. Um, I've got this one here which is straight. Oh, I needed one which isn't straight. It's kind of straight to straight, which kind of makes it pointless, doesn't it? Really? You have to wonder why it's doing that, don't you? That's um, effective. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I just had a few things like this. Those little chargers. Sometimes the charger is actually okay. You just need the right main socket. And need these little death adapters. And I was actually getting a bit low on them. I don't use them very often. They're not the sort of thing you use permanently. If you've got a connector you're going to have plugged in the wall a lot, get a proper plug on it. Don't use these things. These are a temporary solution to try something out. That's all they're for. Otherwise you end up burning your house down. Be careful. I know what I'm doing. Well, maybe. I might know what I'm doing. I'm not sure. Do I know what I'm doing? Probably not. Don't listen to me. I don't know what I'm talking about. There's another kind of death adapter. This one's a better quality one. So that's your proper insulated pins. That's what it's supposed to be. Not like this, you can see the difference there between those. And this is also multi-pin. It does UK and this one doesn't do American, but it does European style. This is also pretty cheap. These don't cost much at all, but like I was saying, you only use these to try things out. You don't use them long term. If you use them long term, it's a big risk. Oh, my red knife slipped me down. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> I think they're a bit mixed up now. They're slipping between all the dividers. Oh, oh, oh no. top is bowed, instead of being flat, the case is really flimsy, look at that, it's a really flimsy case. Yeah, so they've all moved down this end. Um, so I've got small ones in here with big ones and, and yeah, um, yeah. So it's different sizes and they're nuts. Now the idea of these is that you can choose the one you want, which is in there somewhere, and use these for threaded inserts when you're doing 3D printing. So if you need to put a, a threaded, like a machine screw into something, you can melt one of these into the plastic and then put your screw in. Yeah, these, I'm pretty sure these aren't actually the ones I had the picture of. The ones I had pictured had diagonal, like these have got, I don't know, you can kind of see those, the knurlings on these, it's all straight, so one direction, it's all straight. I'm pretty sure the ones I actually purchased with the diagonal type, which are slightly better, they lock in better, because you've got opposing diagonal slopes, one goes one way, one goes the other way, so it locks the things in so they don't spin or try and pull. These ones aren't as good. Now, I'm pretty sure I actually got some of these before, but you think I can find them? No idea, can't find them. I'm pretty sure these aren't actually the ones I purchased. I'll have to go back and check now. Anyway, a bit of a for these down below. These are still relatively good, you know, they're okay, they're better than not having one, but they're not the best type. You're going to be putting a lot of mechanical stress on the screws, and these aren't the best ones because they can want to pull out. I'm not going to sit there and sort these out. There's 1,300 of them in here. I'll worry about it when the time comes. More nuts. So I purchased the nuts not long ago, and when I got them, I thought, actually, there's not very many nuts. So I got some more. These are just 3mm nuts. And I find these three millimeter screws, three millimeter nuts, a lot when building projects or making things. Three millimeter is always the size I end up using. 
I find I need a lot of them. Now this one's taped up so I'm going to have to forgo the Ren knife and use an actual knife in this case. Four copper spade terminals. Now these are quite expensive. Are they real copper? Are they some kind of coating? Don't know. Let's see if they're magnetic, shall we? That's always the first clue. Strong magnet. Not magnetic. That's a good sign. That means they're not steel. <laughs> I did get some similar ones before, but these are different. These are better ones. Also quite expensive. Um, so these can go over binding terminals and things like that, binding posts. And these are crimped ones. I got some ones before which were like a banana type fitting one. And these ones are crimp on ones for wiring. So this is how I can make up some cables, some test leads. And attach them more easily to binding posts. But these were quite expensive. Double bag for our protection. Triple bag for our protection. <laughs> I often have little small numbers of like screws or bits and pieces or components which need to be sorted out. These are actually a bit smaller than I thought they were going to be. Sometimes these little bags like this. Now I've got lots of parts drawers. And sometimes you want to separate components out into those parts drawers. Transistors or whatever, you may have multiple transistors. And to use your space efficiently, you may want to put multiple transistors in one drawer. And if you get things like this, you can put a whole bunch of them in one drawer and just mark on the bag what's actually in it. Instead of having one drawer dedicated or to you know one or two parts, you could put ten parts in that drawer. It's a way of improving your space efficiency. Now I've got several transistors which I need to sort out. I don't know, 30 or so different types which I need to reorganise. And I'm thinking, right, if I can get some of these little bags, I can put some transistors in these bags and organise them that way and then put those in the parts drawers. And so I've got a bunch of these, I think it's 50 or 100 or something like that, I think maybe 100. These weren't expensive, it's like literally a few dollars. I was expecting these to be slightly bigger than they are, I think, but... That's fine, it's still perfectly usable like this. I'll definitely make use of these. I'm going to get some of these bags for a while, so I could do that job, but... Yeah, I kept on forgetting about it. Or procrastinating, I'm not quite sure which one it is. It's probably the latter. So this package came from Aramax. Now, there's a story with this. I don't think it's completely Aramax's fault. I believe it's another company which relabels these and then passes them on to Aramax. I had a package go missing, well, get redirected to the wrong place. And then suddenly I had two packages go to the wrong place. They both went to Palmerston North. Same place the first package went. Thankfully the address they're going to, it seems the people that are there are honest and they're returning them. So they're going back to Aramax and then Aramax are then getting them back off them and sending them to me. But they're sending them to completely the wrong district. Now two of these went to the wrong address. The Aramax, I think they've done as franchises, I'm not quite sure. But I was dealing with them saying, hey look, you know, this is a problem. And they've said, yep, yeah, we've got them, we've got them both back. The one on my desk, and they'll get them on to me. So, that both packages at the same time. This package arrived two days ago. The other one hasn't arrived yet, and it's showing as being delayed. I'm worried that maybe they've lost the other one now. I don't think it's Aramex's fault. I think it's um, the company which relabels them. I can't remember what the company's called now. But yeah, it's it's not good. They're actually labelling them with the wrong address on. It's not Aramex. The address that's got a pot on here isn't my address. The road name is. None of the rest of it is. Obviously they're choosing from a list when they're relabeling and they're just choosing the first one that comes up instead of looking for, oh, maybe there's more than one name of that type in the entire country. Stop ranting. I don't know if this is a mistake or not. It may be, it may not be. Okay, Creative Springs. I've got some new bed springs from my printer as well. It's got a set of four. I'm still using the original end of three springs on it, or V2. I thought I'd get some of these more rigid ones, just to see if I'd make the bed a bit more stable. It's not too bad, but I thought I'd just do it. A lot of people exchange to these type and they find them better, so I thought I'd do it too. And this, I think. Got some nozzles. Yeah, um, so this is the mistake. So if you saw my last mail bag, you would have seen this. I had a bit of a um, a moment, I suppose. Now, I had one of these on my shopping list. I put it in my cart, and 
I bought one, right? So this is the Extruder Pro kit, right? Extru Sprite Extruder Pro for the Ender 3s. And, well, I got one, put it in my car for a while. I had it sitting there for a little while whilst I was sort of debating whether or not I'd put the money into it. I'm going to upgrade to a direct drive extruder, which is what this is for the Ender 3. Now, I did that, and I kind of made a mistake, and I might have forgotten that I bought one. And then I was doing something a couple of weeks later, or a week or so later, thinking, why am I take the extruder I had on there? That's weird. I thought I had it in my cart. So I added another one to the cart and bought one. And so now I've got two of these direct drive extruders. Now that's not a complete disaster. Also got the flex here and the carriage and stuff. This is exactly the same as the other one I showed last mailbag. Anyway, so it's not a complete disaster because I do actually have two Ender 3 printers. I've got the original Ender 3 and I've got the Ender 3 V2. Now I think the Ender 3, I think that one I purchased and the V2 was a review unit, I think. I've given that one for review. Could have been the other way around, I can't remember now. But I've got the original Ender 3 and the Ender 3 V2. So I've actually got two Ender 3s that I can put these on. So even though I've got two of them, I can upgrade them both with a direct drive. So I'm going to do one printer first and see how that goes. And if it works well, then I'll upgrade the other one as well. If it doesn't, then I've got spares for the one I've already upgraded, I guess. I don't know, but that's the plan. So manual with it. What there is of it. And some nozzles to go with it. 0.4mm I can see there. I think probably all 0.4s. doesn't specify so probably all 0.4mm nozzles and that's the most common size you use. You use a lot of them. You know they do wear out over time so it's worth changing them once in a while if you're getting printing issues. Sometimes just change a nozzle won't fix it. That's what it takes sometimes. Anyway that's that lot. So check out other videos down below. Other things you might be interested in watching. 3D printing videos, electronics repair stuff, that kind of thing. Subscribe over here right there if you're not already subscribed and a Patreon support link over there. If you feel like donating to the channel, help me to buy equipment like 3D printing stuff, bits and pieces, maybe some nuts which aren't mixed up, that kind of thing. Yeah. Peace later.